Thank you very much. I just want to make an initial comment that the stock market just hit an all-time record high. It broke for the first time ever, 23,000. So we're very happy about that. I hope that Greece is going to be doing the same thing very soon. I think they will. But I'm honored to welcome Prime Minister Cyprus to Gre from — of Greece, and he — he's a special man who's done a very special job. We're grateful to the Prime Minister and to his entire delegation for visiting us today at the White House. Greece is a cradle of Western civilization, so true, of democracy, literature, philosophy, science, and so much else. America looks on that glorious heritage with wonder and with awe. You do indeed have a tremendous heritage, Mr. Prime Minister. Perhaps for this reason, America's friendship with the Greek people has been long and enduring. Thomas Jefferson wrote at the dawn of the modern Greek state that no people sympathize more with Greek patriots and none offer more sincere and ardent prayers to heaven for their success than the American people. Jefferson's words are true to this day. Mr. Prime Minister, I'm proud to report that this past March, we celebrated Greek Independence Day right here at the White House. And that was great. America and Greece draw on this common history and heritage and on our people's abiding commitment to freedom and sovereignty. In working together on great challenges and opportunities, now before us, there are tremendous opportunities before us in so many different ways. The Prime Minister and I have just concluded a very productive discussion on the cooperation between our two countries, including on matters of defense, energy, commerce, and trade. I want to thank the Prime Minister and the Greek people for serving as gracious hosts to our U.S. Naval Forces at Suda Bay. I also commend Greece for being one of the few NATO countries currently spending at least 2 percent of GDP on defense. My administration has also informed Congress of a potential sale to Greece to upgrade its F-16 aircraft. This agreement to strengthen the Hellenic Air Force is worth up to $2.4 billion and would generate thousands of American jobs. We also are making great strides in our economic cooperation. The American people stand with the Greek people as they recover from the economic crisis that recently afflicted their nation. I've encouraged the Prime Minister in his continued implementation of reform and reform programs, and I have totally reaffirmed our support for a responsible debt relief plan. A strong and flourishing Greece provides immense opportunity for American trade, investment, and job creation. I thank the Prime Minister, his predecessors, and the Greek people for their efforts to return stability and prosperity to Greece. On energy, we appreciate Greek contributions to European energy security through its support of the Trans-Adriatic Pipeline, the Greece-Bulgaria interconnector, and liquefied natural gas facilities that are capable of transporting diverse sources of energy to Europe, including potential liquefied natural gas exports from the United States, of which that particular route and business is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, as you know. These initiatives make both our people safer and create good jobs for our hardworking citizens. Finally, I'm also very proud that the United States will be the honored country at next year's International Fair in Greece. This historic business and trade exhibition will showcase American technology, enterprise, and innovation on the world stage. We look very much forward to sending a high-level delegation to attend this wonderful event. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you again for being here today and for your partnership in addressing critical issues facing our countries. I look forward to having many productive discussions with you and to having a very close and warm cooperation on a wide range of shared objectives. We will build upon our foundation of shared history and shared values to pursue a future of security, prosperity, and peace for both your nation and ours. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much.
Θα ήθελα να ευχαριστήσω. I would like to warmly thank the uh, President of the United States for his hospitality and for his very uh, productive discussions we had today. The friendship between our two countries is very strong and it's based on our common democratic principles, on the values that we jointly share as peoples. It is correct that the founders uh, of the United States were inspired by ancient Greece and the Greek Revolution was inspired by the American Revolution for independence. At the same time, our relationship is based, uh, was also based on a very dynamic uh, diaspora of Greek uh, uh, people here in, in the U.S., which offers many, uh, have many to offer in both for both countries. As we underlined earlier, the Greek-U.S. relationships may be at their best uh, compared to the past since the Second World War when our peoples worked together and fought together shoulder to shoulder against fascism. And I do believe that there are many reasons for this. Today, our strategy is based on mutual respect and it is fed by the significant support provided by the U.S. to Greece and to the Greek people during uh, the hard times of the economic crisis, support for the exit uh, of Greece uh, from cr the crisis. And at this point, I would like to just focus a bit. Greece today fulfills three basic objectives which do not only relate to Greece, but I would say that are of special significance at an international level. First, it is dynamically coming out of a crisis noting gr wonderful growth rates and it be it's beginning to attract investments and increase its exports as we see uh, as well from the uh, Greek US balance uh, of trade not and it le it's leaving behind not only a crisis but it, it's leaving behind the f economic model that led to the crisis second I Greece today is the most significant pillar of security and cooperation in one of the most important but at the same time unstable sensitive areas of the planet. A country with a dynamic multidimensional foreign policy, a country which is a reliable partner and, uh, and uh, ally of the United States which fulfills its NATO obligations and it is in close cooperation in the defense sector with the United States. It's a country which maintains the dialogue with Turkey despite the difficulties that we face and the challenges, but knowing the very important European course of Turkey. It's a country also that promotes cooperation in the Middle East and the Balkans, which contribute to the security and the gr uh, growth of the area. And third, Greece, being already pretty strong in maritime and tourism, is gradually becoming a significant crossroads for transportation and energy. I would like to mention the uh, com uh, completion of the TAP uh, pipeline and the East Med uh, pipeline, the agreement for a floating, uh, for an LNG station in Alexandropolis, which is in Northeast Greece, and the prospect that Alexandropolis will be a, uh, an area where we can receive exports, imports uh, from the United States uh, of uh, fracking. And I would like to mention the, our ports from uh, Athens and Thessaloniki and the promotion of strong and fast rail connections with the rest of the Balkans. And in this context, it's very clear that our strategic cooperation with the United States is becoming more important than ever. First of all, well, we look forward because we look forward. And this is a significant message of my visit here and my meeting with economic uh, representatives. We look forward to attracting U.S. investments and the more s substantial support of the U.S. in our effort to exit this horrible crisis. 
the fact that the United States will be the honored country in 2018 in the International Fair of Thessaloniki will play a significant role in this effort. Second, because Greece can develop dynamically develop, uh, in creating a pillar of stability and security only if it is freed from the fundamental national concerns in the areas of security and defense. The United States have a significant role to play in this matter, uh, not only in the diplomatic, but also in the defense sector. And we look forward in this context in the fair and the viable solution in the Cypriot issue based on the decisions of the UN Security Council, uh, a solution for the benefit of all Cypriots without guarantors or uh, occupying uh, military forces that will give a, a new perspective to the area but at the same time we are underlining that the dangerous intervention uh, type presence of Turkey in the Aegean must end. It undermines on a daily basis the relationship between two NATO al allies in a broader uh, unstable and sensitive area. Greece is a country that's always open to dialogue, but I want to be very clear. It will always protect decisively its sovereignty rights against illicit claims and disputes. And with these thoughts, I would like to thank, warmly thank uh, President Trump for his w for the wonderful discussions we held, which I believe will give a very substantial push to the existing dynamic cooperation. And I believed, and I said that we created a work group between the ministers of economy, the secretaries of the economy, so we can monitor the ability to have a substantial cooperation in investment, in economy, and in all sectors. Thank you very much, sir. Take a few questions. Uh, John, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Good to see you out in the Rose Garden again. Thank you. <laughs> we nice seem to place. do this on occasion. It's a nice place. Um, I have a, a question for the Prime Minister in, in a moment, if I could. But first, sir, you said just a short time ago that Obamacare is virtually dead. Uh, your plans for Graham Cassidy have not been able to get off the ground in the Senate. There's no idea whether or not it will in early 2018. You've been picking around the edges to some degree with the executive orders, some of which critics say are helping to destroy Obamacare. So I'm wondering, at, at this point, what is your health care plan, sir? Well, if you look at uh, insurance companies and you take a good, strong look and, and at the numbers, you'll see since uh, the formation of Obamacare, they're up 400 percent, 450 percent, 250 percent, 300 percent. They've made a fortune, the insurance companies. So when I knocked out the, the hundreds of millions of dollars a month being paid back to the insurance companies by politicians, uh, I must tell you, that uh, wanted me to continue to pay this. I said, I'm not going to do it. Uh, this is money that goes to the insurance companies to line their pockets, to raise up their stock prices, and they've had a record run. They've had an incredible run, and it's not appropriate. Obamacare is a disaster. It's virtually dead. As far as I'm concerned, it really is dead, and I predicted that a long time ago. It's a concept that doesn't work. And we are very close. We feel we have the votes. And as soon as we're finished with taxes, John, we really feel we have the votes to uh, get block grants into the states where the states can much better manage this money and much better take care of the people rather than the federal government. The state block grants will do massive block grants into the various states so that the states can run the program. So we feel we have the votes. We're going to be doing that after the taxes. Uh, in the meantime, we're involved with a budget, and then after the budget, hopefully that gets approved, and after the budget, assuming we have the support of all the Republicans, because we'll have no support from the Democrats, or almost no support, because they've really become just obstructionists. They have no good policies, and frankly, they're not good politicians, but they're very good obstructionists, and that's what they do well, obstruct. Uh, the number of nominees that I have approved by the Democrats are about half of what President Obama had. And when you look at that, and you can look at judicial appointments, look how slow that's going. I'll have 145, ultimately, which is a tremendous number. 
will have 17 Court of Appeals appointments, but uh, they're not getting approved. They're being slow walked by uh, Schumer and the group of Democrats that uh, really it's it's really disgraceful. Even people that they know they're going to approve, they take it right out to the end. They use every single minute. And I think it's a very disgraceful situation. But Oca Obamacare is everything but dead. Uh, the people aren't going to take it. The, they're not going to take it. Alaska, they had over a 200 percent increase. In Arizona, they were 116 percent. And I hear going up even higher. And the people aren't going to take that any longer. So I think we're in great shape. I think we have the votes. Uh, and we'll be doing that right after the largest tax cuts in the history of our country are approved, hopefully sometime in the very near future. So, so is Graham Cassidy still the plan, sir? Yeah, essentially that would be the plan, yes. Block and, rents. And Mr. Prime Minister, um, with respect to the President, in March of 2016, you said at the potential for a Donald Trump presidency, quote, I hope we will not face this evil. And I'm wondering if after spending time with the President, you have changed your mind or if you're of the same mind. I wish I knew that before my speech. <laughs> Διαπίστωσα από την συνάντηση που είχαμε τον πρόεδρο ότι η προ... uh, the meeting had with uh, the uh, president his approach and the way he addresses the no, health products. Uh, the U.S. is a very strong power, and their ability to uh, intervene for good are very, very important. I want to confirm that the meeting that we had was very productive. Not a moment did I feel that I threatened at any time. I, uh, I saw that there is a very fertile outlook here in order to set aside any differences we may have to find the common ground, the common ground which is really important for the relationship between the two, our two peoples that are traditional and historical, and for our common objectives. We need common values. We have common values, excuse me. Don't forget that the value of democracy and freedom was born in Greece. And it's one of the basic values that tra traverses uh, American culture and American tradition. The president today of the US is continues this tradition, and I think our collaboration will be very substantial, and I'm very optimistic after the meeting that we had today. So I might just add that a number of countries were a little bit nervous at the beginning, and I have very good relationships with the leaders of virtually every country I've dealt with. But the reason they were concerned was because I will not allow our country, the United States of America, to be taken advantage of by so many other countries all over the world. If you look at our trade deficits, massive trade deficits with virtually every country, you look at our jobs moving out to certain countries, and uh, the, the companies are leaving and they're firing the people, and the product is made elsewhere, and then it's sold back into the United States. I'm not going to be allowing that. So I can understand how certain countries and the leaders of certain countries may feel. But we're just not going to allow the United States to be taken advantage of by other countries anymore. And there's nothing we can do about that. Thank you. Okay, you have a question. Leonard Deer with the Greek Public TV. Mr. Prime Minister, how do you plan to attract uh, long term foreign direct investments in Greece? And uh, if you can elaborate, please, on the steps that Greece is making to tackle uh, bureaucracy and uh, overtaxation in order to ensure investments <coughs> ar uh, investors around the world that Greece is ready mm -hmm. for business. And, Mr. President, if I may. Why would you encourage the U.S. companies to invest in Greece, and how can the U.S. support the Greek efforts uh, to fully turn the page, attract investments, and uh, manage uh, its debt? Thank you. First of all, this is a one thing is to uh, intervene legislatively to attract investment, and it's different to work on a daily basis to implement uh, the, these intentions in a stable environment. We uh, opted to conflict with the basic 
illnesses of Greek public administration and to create a friendly environment for foreign investment because this is our investment, uh, our priority today. Investment it means jobs, jobs means less unemployment and it means return of young people that have left Greece, educated Greeks that have left Greece to, uh, to go to other countries to come back to Greece. So what did we do? We passed a, a law in Parliament that provides a stable tax environment a uh, tax rate, a fixed tax rate for 12 years for investments of high value. We simplified the procedures to provide licenses to investments. We, insti we introduced the fast track process for strategic investments. And we also made significant change to hit and, co and combat uh, bureaucracy through digitization of procedures, administrative procedures in public administration, and our vision is to have a digital public administration, but that we really want to make it practice. I personally have created a task force in the Prime Minister uh, office for investments. So we can see whether laws are being implemented, whether there is effectiveness, and we are sending out a strong signal of political will to promote these uh, projects. The president asked me earlier what is happening w with the Hellenicon, with the old airport, where years ago he himself is a businessman in the past was interested in it, and he saw himself the weaknesses and the illnesses of, of Greek public administration. I informed him it's moving on, it's moving along, and very soon we will see this area to being formed to a very, very large Lira State project in Greece, which will be, we're hoping to, that it'll be a, an attraction for other investments from abroad. Now, I'd like to also say that Greece, for the first time, from the last country, is the first country in absorbing European funds, investment capital from European structural funds. So we uh, find ourselves at a turning point, a point where investments can provide the ability to exit finally the crisis and the message I want to pass on to U.S. investments that Greece is not just an a tourist attraction, the best baby in the world, but it's also an investment attraction, uh, an investment destination as well. That We have a great confidence in Greece. I think it's a land of tremendous potential. I know uh, many people are looking to invest in Greece. A lot of the problems are behind it. Uh, they've had some very good leadership. They've really done a lot of — they've made a lot of difficult decisions. We are helping, as you know, with a massive uh, renovation of their Air Force and also of airplanes generally going to Greece. Uh, they're looking at buying additional planes from Boeing. And we are helping uh, — we're very much involved with Greece and with helping Greece get back on its feet. Uh, we have a tremendous — Greek population in this country, people whose heritage is uh, Greece. And we uh, we love that country, special country, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And so I think it's got great potential, and we are helping it along. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, you want to go? Thank you, Mr. President. Sure. Um, I have a question for both of, both of you, but let me start with you, Mr. President. Um, let me s give you a quick question about the Federal Reserve. Do you have any other candidates that you're looking at other than Powell, Yellen, the five that have already been named? Are you looking at anyone besides those folks? I would say within those five, you'll probably get the answer. And I'll be making the decision over the next fairly short period of time. Can you say who your favorite is at this point? Uh, honestly, I like them all. Okay. <laughs> I do. I have a great respect for all of them. But I'll make a decision over the next very short period of time. Can I ask you a quick Obamacare question as well, even sure. though John Roberts asked sure. as well? Sure. Um, apparently, uh, Lamar Alexander has said he's made a deal with Senator Patty Murray to stabilize Obamacare. Has the White House been involved in those negotiations, and will you support that deal? Yes, we have been involved, and this is a short-term deal uh, because we think ultimately block grants going to the states is going to be the answer. That's a very uh, good solution. We think it's going to not only save money but give people much better health care with a very, very much smaller premium spike. And you look at what's gone on with that. Also, much lower deductible so they can use it. 
Uh, Lamar has been working very, very hard with uh, the Democratic, uh, his colleagues on the other side, and Patty Murray is one of them in particular. And uh, they're coming up, and they're fairly close to a short-term solution. The solution will be for about a year or two years, and it'll get us over this intermediate hump, because we have, as you probably know, we have either have the votes or we're very close to having the votes, and we will get the votes for having really the potential of having great health care in our country. So they are indeed working, but it is a short-term uh, solution so that we don't have this very dangerous little period, uh, including dangerous period for insurance companies, by the way. Uh, for a period of one year, two years, we will have a very good solution, but we're going to have a great solution ultimately for health care. Okay? And they are working together, and I know very much what they're doing. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Prime Minister, on Turkey, do you still regard Turkey as a democracy, and should Turkey remain a member of NATO? Uh, I have to say that despite our concerns f regarding Turkey, despite the concerns that are also based on the daily uh, uh, intervention, uh, Turkish intervention in, in the Aegean. Nevertheless, we continue to support the uh, Turkish course the, towards Europe. We respect it as a regional power, and we believe that it must stay oriented toward the European perspective, st stably pr oriented uh, to its collaboration with the West, and or stably uh, oriented towards NATO. We do believe that the European outlook perspective of, of Turkey can also be a lever of pressure so that there is we can have those reforms toward the democratization of the uh, domestic of the country uh, so my answer to your question is relatively easy yes we do believe that turkey must remain uh, within nato and in its uh, european course but on the other side we have to ensure and we must make it clear to this uh, ally of ours and it's to its government that the road to Europe and the stay and the collaboration with the West uh, carries with it certain collab certain uh, conditions and certain responsibilities and one of the most necessary conditions is to respect international law to collaborate and not promote uh, tension with ally countries such as Greece this is our basic direction and I do believe I had the opportunity to uh, go uh, in detail uh, on this matter with uh, Pre President Trump to explaining the need f f for the fulfillment of these conditions so that there are clear messages also toward the uh, Turkish administration. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Prime Minister, um, how do you... Uh, as Greeks like to hear about the geo strategic importance of Greece in the region, what is your government planning to do to enhance uh, this role uh, and to, for the benefit of the bilateral relationship? And uh, for specifically in Suda Bay, uh, are there any uh, plans you have for it? And Mr. President, uh, you praised uh, Greece's role in uh, NATO with the contribution and with in Suda Bay. Amid the volatile region of the Eastern Mediterranean, what do you see as the potential of Greece being as a pillar of stability in the region? And what would the U.S. like to see happening in order for Greece to achieve this potential? Thank you. Well, I'll just start by saying that I think it has a great role in stability in the area. Uh, we have a feeling that it will get stronger and stronger. Uh, very stable people. It's got the potential be to, once it gets over this tremendous financial hurdle that it's in the process of working out, uh, we think that there'll be great stability in Greece. And militarily and in every way, we look at it as very important and very important to the United States. Uh, we have great confidence in uh, Greece as a nation. Uh, we have great confidence in what they're doing relative to their military, because I know they have plans to do some terrific things. 
uh, and we know they will be an ally for many, many years to come. You know, they've always been a very reliable ally, and we've always been very reliable to them. Uh, so we look forward to that for many years. We're going to be friends for many, many years, and stability is very important. And we look upon that, with respect to Greece, as being a key. Okay? Thank you. As regards the uh, initiatives, that, initiatives that we're going to be taking, but also uh, regarding the initiatives that we have taken to uh, broaden the strategic role of, of Greece as a reliable partner, both in the UA, uh, EU, uh, EU and NATO, I'd like to say that from the first moment we took over the administration, we moved, uh, we proceeded w to a new, do a new dogma uh, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but uh, as a basic aim to enhance the role of Greece as a country that is a pillar of safe security and stability in a very sensitive and insta unstable area, the region. We uh, enhanced our collaboration uh, with two significant partners uh, in the area, uh, Egypt and uh, Israel, and uh, Greece, Cyprus with Israel, and Greece, Cyprus and with Egypt, and with other countries in the area, such as Jordan, Le Lebanon. Our, our goal is that through these multilateral collaborations to ensure the collaboration, stability, peace, and joint development, joint growth in this area. Of course, Greece, for a number of years, has been playing, as underlined earlier, it, it plays a very, uh, the role of a, of a reliable ally uh, of the U.S., but it also has a unique, different feature. Greece may be talking with the Arab world, with other countries in the East, so it's not just a, a NATO member. It's a useful ally for the United States of America. Now, as regards Crete and Sudebe, we all know it is a special geostrategic uh, importance, and we evaluated, jointly evaluated, and I think that we are we're doing good work there, uh, and it, it it can and it must be upgraded, enhanced. here and he said this is so beautiful i said this is the rose garden and i think even the media likes the rose garden that's hard to believe but even the media likes it mr prime minister it's been a great honor having you and we look forward to many many years of friendship working together and uh, keep up the good work thank you very, thank much. You very much